Hi, I'm Deanna Willman, and this is part two on carrier oils. I hope that the first part was very beneficial to you and that you're already having fun experimenting with some of them. Um, we're going to go through five more today, and I hope that they are just as beneficial to you as the other five. Anyway, um, today we are going to start with castor oil. Now, when I say castor oil, most people have memories of a grandmother who's shoving castor oil down their throat for, uh, di uh, for any kind of digestive system problems or, um, you know, I know one grandmother who was giving castor oil for everything. And some people have heard of people using castor oil to bring on labor. Yes and no, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, castor oil is very good at clearing out the, the uh, intestines but um, whether it really actually brings on labor or not, that's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's individual. It's one of those things, everybody is different, every oil is different, and every oil is going to act differently with different people. Not that I would suggest using it for inducing labor. But let's just talk about castor oil and the exciting medicinal properties that castor oil actually has. Um, castor oil is called a drawing oil, a drawing oil. It draws out toxins, it draws out bacteria, it draws out infections. So uh, for instance, um, people used to put castor oil and onions on the chest or castor oil and garlic. And that was great. It actually did pull out the stuff, the mucus and the infection that was in the respiratory system. So it was a, a very good medicinal uh, benefit in that area. Um, if you have um, um, arthritis issues or just uh, pain in your joints or achiness, it's a good one to put on them and it kind of draws out that stuff. If you have a part of your body that is uh, hot from infection, it's a good, good one to put on. It'll draw out that infection, it'll draw out that heat. Um, castor oil also strengthens the lymphatic and immune system. So if you have issues with your lymph system or you need to improve your immune system, it's a good one to be using. Uh, it stimulates the production of collagen and elastin in your skin. Um, you want to look younger, then don't be buying those um, supplements that are collagen, but you want to make your own collagen and castor oil does that. It stimulates your body to produce its own collagen and elastin in your skin. A great one to add into your skincare regimen. Um, I put it on once a week. I just put it straight on without anything else and just enjoy it. It does take a while to soak in. Uh, it does feel sticky and it does um, stain. So if you uh, are wearing clothes that you don't want stained or you're going to be around something that you don't want stained, uh, just be real careful because it can stain. Um, castor oil is also a disinfectant and antifungal. Um, it promotes hair growth. Uh, men, so if you're if you're kind of losing some hair up there and you need to promote some hair growth, uh, get yourself some castor oil. Mix it in with your shampoo. And leave it on for three to four minutes while you're you're washing the rest of your body. Castor oil also increases white blood cells. Uh, so if you have any kind of issue where you're low in white blood cells or uh, your immune system just needs a pick-me-up, a castor oil is a great one for that. It's an anti-inflammatory. It, like I told you, it'll draw the heat, it'll draw the inflammation out of the body. It's an anti-inflammatory. Um, castor oil does have a shelf life of up to five years. And again, you just need to keep it in a cool, cool place that doesn't have any direct light. Uh, it doesn't have to be dark, just no direct light. Anyway, castor oil is kind of fun. It is greasy and sticky, but, but it's fun to play with and, and, and you start learning how to use it medicinally and you just realize you really need it. Your grandmother knew a lot, she just didn't know it all. <laughs> coconut oil is the next one we're going to look at. And coconut oil in its pure form is going to be solid at 75 degrees or below. 76 degrees and higher it becomes liquid and some people don't like this but I, I love it I, I think I think it's great um, now a lot of people out there have started using what is called fractionated oil or fractionated coconut oil and what that means is that they've taken some of the fatty um, essential fatty chains 
out of the coconut oil in order that it will stay liquid, okay? Um, it doesn't have as many of the fatty, the good fatty chains in it that make coconut oil so good for the body, but it's still coconut oil. It's, it's just taking some of that stuff out so that it stays liquid and doesn't become solid. Coconut oil is uh, good for the skin, uh, even for acne. It does not clog the pores. A lot of people think that you know if you put a lot of oil on your face, it can clog pores. Yes and no, it depends. It depends upon how much oil and which oil and what else is on your face. Um, most of the time, what clogs your pores is dirt and dead skin. So if you're keeping your face clean and you're, you're um, sloughing off the dead skin, the oils should not be an issue. So coconut oil is real good, especially if you're fighting acne. Um, it is UV protection, is a great sunscreen. Uh, you want to make your own sunscreen like I told you uh, with a couple of others. This is a good one. Um, it's also an antioxidant, so it's good in skin care. It's good uh, for um, helping fight off uh, the free radicals within your body and in your skin. Coconut oil lowers the LDL cholesterol in your body. Now the LDL cholesterol is the bad cholesterol. Um, coconut oil is going to raise the good cholesterol, which in a healthy body, the more HDL there is, the less LDL there is. There's something about increasing the HDL that decreases the LDL. The LDL is bad, and that's the one that we always want low. So coconut oil does that by raising the HDL and the LDL will lower. So if you have cholesterol issues, uh, coconut oil is a great one to be eating, to be putting in drinks, uh, to be putting in anything that's going to touch you, bathe in it, um, skin care. It's, it's a very good one to be using. Um, coconut oil can cross the blood-brain barrier, so it is a good food for the brain. Um, it's one of the, the foods that, the fats that they know the brain needs in order to function properly. Um, they have found wonderful success in dealing with patients who have dementia and Alzheimer's, uh, early onset Alzheimer's, by um, giving them coconut oil, two tablespoons of coconut oil, two times a day. And uh, they either put it in their oatmeal or their coffee or whatever. But they're finding wonderful things happening with this because it's actually going into the brain and feeding the brain. Um, coconut oil is also antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral. And that's wonderful if you're using it for skin care because you know you don't have to have uh, preservatives or parabens to keep your skin care products from going bad. Um, you, your co coconut oil is going to keep out any bacteria, fungus, or viruses. So you don't have to worry about um, using preservatives or parabens or anything that's going to actually be bad for you to keep it from going bad. Now with coconut oil, you don't have to keep anything in the refrigerator, um, but if you choose to, you can keep it in the refrigerator and that keeps it even longer. Uh, it's a very good moisturizer. Uh, if you have dry skin, it's beautiful for it. It's very good on dry feet especially. Um, mix a little bit of peppermint in with it and put it on your feet. Oh, it'll just take care of your dry, tired feet beautifully. Um, coconut oil reduces the risk of blood clots. Um, here's another one where if you've had surgery or you know someone who's had surgery, it's a good one to rub into their legs and their arms to help prevent uh, blood clots. Um, that's the biggest concern lately after surgery is that patients who are recuperating are developing blood clots and, and those actually can become fatal. Um, so coconut oil is one that actually reduces the risk of that. Um, it also helps dissolve gallstones. So if you have issues with gallstones, it's a great one to be using. Um, if you're eating coconut oil on a regular basis, uh, you should be have not should not have problems with gallstones. It should be taking care of it. Um, um, coconut oil also helps extend the life shelf life of other carrier oils. So if you have one that's only about six months and you add uh, coconut oil to it, it'll last a whole lot longer because the coconut oil actually has a shelf life of about five years. So again, but if you have something that uh, needs to be refrigerated, be sure that you're refrigerating it because that, uh, even though you're adding coconut to it, coconut oil to it to extend the shelf life, if it's something that needs to be in the refrigerator, you need to keep it in the refrigerator. 
So I hope that helps you with coconut oil. And the next one I want to talk about is evening primrose oil. Um, some people have heard about this one because it's another one that a lot of women have used for issues such as menopause and PMS. Um, but it's good for men as well. It has high levels of essential fatty acids. Uh, those are the, the, the things that feed the body, particularly the brain, and we need those, the, the good fatty acids. Um, it soothes inflammation of the skin, and so it helps with things like uh, acne, eczema, hives, those kinds of things. It leaves a little bit of an oily feeling on the skin. So if you're naturally oily, um, you may just want to use it a couple times a week uh, or once a week, um, but you want to make sure that you're cleansing your face real good beforehand. Uh, for dry skin, it's wonderful. It'll just leave you feeling a little more um, uh, moisturized, a little, um, little oilier, but it seeks in pretty well. Um, it is an anti-inflammatory, and it's believed to heal nerve damage, relieve joint pain, and prevent migraines. Um, <coughs> this is the only uh, carrier oil I know that actually has any kind of effect on migraines. So if you're one of those who suffers from migraines, um, this is a good one to check into and, and try it out and see how it helps you. Um, evening primrose also protects the liver. It nourishes the nails and the scalp. Um, if you need, uh, if your nails look real bad, it's one of those you can rub in and use on a daily basis and it will actually um, improve the health of your nails and protect them. And same with the scalp. Like I said before, uh, evening primrose uh, relieves symptoms of PMS and menopause and so many women use those but it's not uh, an estrogen that's gonna build up within the body. So men can use it as well. Um, people with an overabundance of est estrogen don't have to worry about taking it because it's not going to build up in the body. Um, the shelf life of evening primrose is 24 months or two years if you refrigerate it. It does need to be refrigerated. Okay, the fourth one I want to talk about in this video is flaxseed oil. Um, many people have heard of flaxseed and heard of flaxseed meal maybe. So maybe some of you use that in place of wheat. Um, flaxseed oil is made out of the seeds. They're crushed, pressed real hard. And flaxseed oil is an antiseptic, anti-rheumatic, and anti-inflammatory. So if you have uh, joint issues or if you have uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, if you have septic issues, if you're uh, an infection in the blood, it's very good for those things. It will also help um, ward off those things or uh, um, lessen those things. Um, flaxseed is extremely high in vitamin E and omega-3s and it protects against heart disease. Um, now, a lot of people know that they should have a higher ratio of omega-3 to omega-6, and most of our processed foods and vegetable oils are actually way higher in, in, high, in omega-6s and very low in omega-3s, which produces a lot of inflammation in the body. Flaxseed oil is, is different. It's much higher in vitamin th in omega-3 and very, very low in omega-6. So it reverses the inflammation. It's an excellent oil for diabetics. Um, diabetics, <clears throat> well, in the body, it, the body has to break down omega-3s in, in three different stages. Diabetics, they have found, have a hard time starting with the first phase. They have a hard time breaking the omega-3 down in the first phase in order to continue on. And without being able to do that, it's hard for the body to continue on and actually successfully use the omega-3 that is given to it. Well, flaxseed, um, apparently the omega in flaxseed has already been broken down in the first phase and is already in the second phase. So diabetics are able to take flaxseed oil and start from there and more, get much more benefit out of the omega-3s that they're putting in their body. So, um, in fact, anyone who comes to me with diabetes, I deeply, uh, highly recommend that they be using flaxseed oil, whether they do it orally or put it on their body in some way. Um, it's very, very beneficial to them. Flaxseed oil prevents scarring and stretch marks, and it is anti-aging. Um, it will protect and strengthen the nervous system, 
and it soothes the digestive issues. Um, flaxseed oil is slow to absorb and can feel waxy for a little while, so it's not one you want to put on um, right before your makeup because you'll be waiting a while in order to put on your makeup or um, put on right before you put on some clothing. Um, you'll want to put it on probably on the bottoms of your feet and um, allow it to be absorbed through the bottom of your feet. I talked in one of my other videos about how the feet have the largest pores in the body and every organ in the body is, has a connection point on the foot as well as on the hand. And um, so putting it on the feet is going to be absorbed much faster, quicker, and it's going to go to all parts of the body. And the shelf life of flaxseed oil is six months if you keep it refrigerated. Now I will tell you, flaxseed oil does not taste real well. Um, some people can acquire a taste for it, but if you put it in a smoothie or you put it into a, sal a homemade salad dressing, um, you can disguise, you can actually um, um, hide the taste. It, it, actually, it's, it's, it hides well in other foods, but by itself it's not a very good um, oil to taste. Look. Okay, and the last one I'm going to talk about in this video is grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil has become very popular um, even for cooking, but again, it needs to be cold expeller pressed, cold pressed, or cold expeller pressed. Um, if it's not, if it has any heat in the, the pressing of the seeds, the pressing of the oil out of the seeds, then it becomes rancid much too quickly, and by the time it gets to the store shelves, it's not any good, and there is no nutrition left in it. But grapeseed oil is becoming very popular, and one of the reasons is because it's very light tasting, so it can be made, anything can be made with it, and it, there's not um, a heavy taste, heavy oily taste. It's also extremely light and silky feeling on the skin. It absorbs very quickly, so it feels wonderful. Um, it's good for acne prone skin. And for those who have acne, it's a good one to be making up your um, facial cleanser and moisturizer and, tone, and toners, well, not your toner, but your uh, cleanser and moisturizers with, uh, body lotions, that kind of stuff. It does reduce skin aging because it has high antioxidant properties. Um, we know that the resveratrol from grapes themselves are a wonderful thing um, for anti-aging and for antioxidants. And this, this, we find the same thing within the seeds. This, they're just a very high antioxidant property. Um, grape seeds are also antibacterial and antiviral. Um, they're also anti-inflammatory and um, antihistamine. Um, and uh, it's very good for opening up the vessels, the, the blood vessels. So um, if you're a person who is, struggles with migraines, a lot of time that's a, a constriction of blood vessels within the brain. Um, it can be used as a possible relief from migraines. Um, one of the best things about grape seeds is, it, is the effect that it has on asthmatics. Um, it tends to open up the airways and allow uh, for better breathing. So um, asthmatics will uh, uh, benefit greatly from this oil, whether they put it on themselves or even if they just eat grape seeds themselves. So, um, and being antibacterial, you don't have to worry about having put it into skincare and bacteria being put in, in um, forming in it because it was antibacterial. It's also antiviral, so if you have a virus or you're trying to prevent a virus, and you mix up a little something with essential oils that are antiviral. Um, this one is a good one to do to work with. Grape seed is a wonderful one because like I said, it's very light, there's hardly any aroma, and uh, it absorbs very quickly. So those are the first, the next five that I wanted to talk about, and I hope that this video has also been beneficial, and I hope that you're having fun um, experimenting and trying out these, uh, these wonderful oils and I just ask that you continue to remember that you get cold pressed or cold expeller pressed um, because you don't want any heat when these are when these oils are made so anyway if you have any questions please contact me and we'll go on to the next video Shalom